right, welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. So tonight may be the big night. I mean, so far, we've got a couple new people following us. Thank you for that. American Caesar, aka Papa Bear, welcome. And Mater Thria. So, tonight is the big night. I say that because the last party of heroes got really, really close. And I'm not going to say how close, but very close to completing the Frozen Horror campaign. And they found the Crystal Key. Also, shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the music that we're hearing right now. Yeah, so they found the Crystal Key in Quest 10, and now they're going to make their way back to Quest 9. The spir spiral staircase for the final confrontation with the frozen horror. Can they do it in the time allotted tonight? Because next Saturday I'm going to be at Gen Con, so I'm going to be away from my computer, won't be able to stream. Well, it's possible that we can stream, but I am not going to be bringing my HeroQuest game all the way. Uh, to Indianapolis into the hotel room to try to stream it with the lousy uh, connection that they have there. And yes, I know people were saying, well, you could get a burner phone and try that, but the amount of data that we'd have to burn to do that for the for the quality, I'd just rather just do it at home. I mean, if I play any games over there, they're going to be live games. So that's just how that's going to go. But I appreciate you're here. And the thing is, we need some heroes for tonight's game. I mean, we've done it with one person, controlling all five heroes and mercenaries, but that's a lot of work. So it works better if we have at least two. Ideally, we would have five, but I know that's a tall order on Saturday night. People got other things going on, but I do appreciate the support. Wow, what a, what a journey it's been. What, a, what an adventure. I'm going to have to create a roll call of all the heroes who played through in the last year since we started the Frozen Horror Hero Quest. So let me just show you the board as we've got it. I mean, I appreciate the lurkers because without them, without the Hero Quest chat, Hero Quest fans chat, um, you couldn't use your gold coins to help the heroes or help the monsters, depending on how things go. So I think we're just going to pass the time while we wait for people to show up. Uh, just showing you some of the things that I've created. And it's one of those funny things, you know, you get, well, as soon as you get stuff back from the printers, you go, hmm, well, I could have made this improvement, and I could have made this other little improvement, made it a little better. It's always how it goes. All right. So we've got the heroes in this area here. Let me just fix my screen. So please join us in Quest Talk if you want to talk with us live, if you want to play as a hero. It is my turn as Zargon. Next here. Let's fix that. Yeah, so I've I really learned a lot about being a GM thanks to this campaign. I mean, it's the longest campaign I've ever run since childhood. And even back then, I, I, I think most of the time I played as a hero. I didn't play as Argon. But I was just thinking of a recent announcement. You can read more about it yourself online. But there was this announcement of this new technology partnership or development or product or something where Hasbro is going to be working with this company to try to develop more like hybrid online digital board game type stuff. And I was thinking to myself, well, that's really a mixed blessing because on the one hand, how cool is it to be able to play remotely with people like we're doing, right? Play remotely. And how cool is it to be able to get a game and, you know, they made a change. And how cool would it be if instead of waiting for Avalon Hill to come out with a blog post somewhere or, you know, try to track down, you know, an update in the next expansion, it's like, boom, they just put it through right there, right then and there. And you get it right there on your phone. 
The downside I see, and I see a lot of downsides. One, big data. I mean, does everybody want to share all their info with these big companies? And you could say, well, it doesn't matter. You're already doing that. But it's like some of us want to kind of like cut down on that. <laughs> I mean, what if, think about this scenario, which is very common. You know, you go off on vacation to a cabin and you've got your board game with you. Oh, darn it, we don't have good internet. So, guess what? Now the game doesn't work. That's no fun. Or what about, it's, you know, in the future, and uh, the company's like, yeah, you know, this game's kind of passe, we're going to just phase it out in favor of the next big thing, doesn't mean, matter if it's popular or not, we want to make the next big profit, make everybody buy the new thing. And now, all of a sudden, your game doesn't work. <laughs> Some, your game's broken, right? I mean, unless it's just, just bonus features or something. And then think about the fact that now they've got you. And of course, companies love this. It's like, oh, well, we've got you on the hook with a subscription-based service. It's like, I gotta pay a subscription to be able to play Monopoly? Like, forget that. <laughs> I'll just buy the version that doesn't have that. And maybe they could say, well, we'll just stop selling it, you know? Well, fine, I'll make it myself. <laughs> You know, so they're losing out on people who just want to go low tech. I mean, one of the appeals of board games is that you want to go low tech. See, this is a great topic for a rant cast moving forward. So I'm just thinking, well, how would HeroQuest benefit from something like this? Well, everybody's said it, you know, digital Zargon. But I want to ask, what is wrong with having a human being control Zargon? <laughs> what is wrong with having a GM? I mean, I know. The whole D&D &D thing was they want to go into digital because they can make so much more money if it's not just one person buying all the stuff. It's everybody in the group buying the stuff, right? So, yeah, okay, but even as Digital Zargon like, becomes perfected, you know, because we've got the companion app, the Digital Zargon is pretty, pretty basic. Even if we have AI, like, having a really, you know got it together Zargon who does all the right moves with the monsters and does all the correct stuff and is challenging that still is not the experience because the ability to ad lib and be creative and joke around with the players is part of the appeal of having an actual Zargon plus he can just make up a new quest and yes an AI can generate a random quest but there's a lot of tweaking that goes into that and it just doesn't have the same you know, the same creativity and interest that you'd get from a player. And yes, if you raise an entire generation of people who think that that's, that's what Hero Quest is, and if you take that away, they can't play, okay, maybe, but Hero Quest itself is based on that nostalgia for that original game, and we've spread our, our info far and wide. You know, you can't suppress that. So, I don't know how this sort of technology could step in and, and just easily replace what we've got going. But, cheers Dead Gamer. Um, shout out to the Rantcast <laughs> on that. And I think I heard someone come in here. Ah, Papa Bear, welcome. Hi. Hey. Hi there. Uh, I'd like to join as a hero. Kansu Permiso. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Well, our first uh, first catch of the day. All right. So. Uh, I don't know how closely you follow me on the Discord, but I, I've only just barely done like the first training scenario, like with my kids as Zargon. So, well, what a um, cool I, experience to have. <laughs> see, it, this is quite the jump from that to the last scenario of the Frozen Horror, but um, I hopefully I'll be okay. Yeah, and see, all the people who didn't show up tonight are now going to see what happens when they don't show up because <laughs> if you screw this up and no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but it's like, it's like, Oh man. <laughs> yeah. But, but let me, let me get your opinion, pop bear. And, and I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Um, so you had a great first experience. It looks like a little fun outing with the family or inning with the family, whatever. How would you feel if somebody just stepped in and said, listen, I've got, this little uh, computer program, which will take away the GM function over completely, and you don't have to worry about it. Would you think that well, was an improvement to the game, or what would you think of that? No, no, no. Um, so we before, like when we first bought the game, like 
last year, uh, before I even started painting stuff, uh, the first thing we did was we, we got, we, you know, booted up the Android app and I took control of one of the heroes and I actually thought it was kind of a pain to, uh, be having to like get the app caught up with like what we were doing on the board and, uh, you know, like, I, like one big difference, for example, uh, between that is that the monsters just kind of go with whoever is closest, it seems like. But uh, that was like in our first time with the app. But then, you know, fast forward a year later when I actually have my stuff painted and uh, and I and I said, screw the app. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be Zargon and my my wife will just kind of have to double hand this uh, since we only have three kids. Um I, there was like a time where my daughter, she turned invisible as the magician, walked through the orcs, and then opened up a door behind him because she wanted to check out the next room. Now, there's no reason why the app wouldn't have had those orcs like turn around and go solo the magician, and that would have made the most tactical sense. But in, in that situation, she was like using invisibility to like sneak around the orcs. So as Zargon, I was like, yeah, I, I give it to her. And and they just kind of charge forward at the barbarian instead, and and you know, and then there's always like little narrative snippets that you can add here and there, like um, you know, the elf isn't technically sneaking, but if my daughter moves her elf up behind the gargoyle and hits him, then that's something that I can add. It's like ah, oh, you sneak up behind him and you know, sneak a sneak attack him from behind, you know. So yeah, that. You don't get that from a digital companion. Uh, that's that's my anecdote. Nice and and welcome to our. It looks like we have our party now. So Count Cogpox is here, and Angus McBain is here. So we've got three heroes, right? <laughs> Unless you guys are just stopping in to say hi or share your opinion. I have me. returned to play the wizard. Yes, excellent. Well, let me ask Papa Bear a question about his story because I really liked it. Um, now, when you said invisibility, are you talking about an ability in the game or something you guys homebrewed? No, sorry, uh, you're right. I, I mixed it up. I was I was thinking the magician. She had the elf, and she was using some of the elf cards from Mage of the Mirror, and I, one of them is yep. turn invisible. So that's what I got it. Well, uh, Angus says rogue for me. Okay, cool. I can start filling this out. Yeah, I printed out a whole bunch of character sheets that I'm taking with me to Gen Con. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll get to use them or not. Because the thing is, like, I'm, I don't really have any tickets to anything. So I'd just be crashing somebody else's game. And they're probably going to be like, nope, I'm Zargon. We're playing my rules. Like, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so Angus is the rogue. All right. And um, Count Cogpox... Yes, I, w I was the uh, wizard last week. We're the wizard. I have all of my sheets and whatnot prepared. Excellent. And Papa Bear, um, that leaves you the elf, the barbarian, or the knight. Um, I'll do I'll do the barbarian. Pretty straightforward guy. Barbarian's a popular popular one. Well. I was thinking uh, there was a recent addition to the app. And see, I'm of two minds. One, I give all the credit in the world to the designers, the two guys that work, I think it's two, who worked on the app. Like, all the gimmicks that they have to program into that thing to make it work or have some, some semblance of working. <laughs> and the gaps that they leave in as far as, like, what you, you, the player, have to physically still do to make it work. Like, it serves two functions. One, it's still encourages you to buy the physical game and two it allows you to do your own homebrew rules into it but they have added more stuff recently to make it a little bit more useful so instead of targeting the nearest hero you can actually uh have it just target the weakest oh yeah and when when it says weakest like it does that very literally like in terms of lowest numerical body points so if you've got a mercenary and a wizard, it's always going to go for the mercenary unless the wizard's body points are like one. You know what I mean? The only problem with the target weak or whatever, however it's phrased, is that it 
like if the monster is out of range, like let's say, you know, it normally takes eight squares. Or, 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 an orc can move up to eight squares. If you're nine squares away, so it can't actually reach you, it doesn't even bother to move. Whereas a human Zargon would be like, well, I'll move my orc partway and then I'll get him the next time. Like it doesn't move at all. It just sticks. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see they just need a little polish on that. I hope there's more iterations as time yeah. goes on for and like hardcore mode or normal mode. Yeah, but I mean, what, what I'm getting at is the future. And I think what they want is they want to bring in the expertise of, of outside technology to basically have AI where at some point we're going to have a GM that's so good it does it flawlessly. But my thought is even with that, you lose a big part of the game. I mean, having the digital Zargon to me is a crutch. It's a replacement for a, a non-ideal situation because you do have people that are playing by themselves or they hate being a GM. They don't want any part of it, even though being a, a, a Zargon GM is pretty simple as far as GM games go. I mean, it's not like the Cyberpunk GM or the D&D GM that has to do all this extra work. But people don't want to do even that and, and I guess that was part of the original game too like the European version you have to roll you roll off to see who picks the heroes and it's like at the end yeah if nobody's picked Zargon or Morkar then you have to have it as if it's like a chore like nobody wants to do it it's like but it's kind of the opposite I think there's younger players that want to be the GM that want to be in control of everything but I think a lot of us enjoy the challenge you know not just well, this is my game. I brought you in, so I'm gonna subject you to this quest <laughs> that I have. I mean, maybe for the maybe for the basic quests, you want the surprise, and you don't mind if it just kind of mechanically throws monsters at you. But just the creativity. I mean, so much is just just gone. Yeah, you miss that banter with the players where Zargon is, you know, reeling his fist back, and he's like, "I'll right. get you next time, party." Right, because you could. You know? <laughs> I could imagine you could have an AI. GM where you'd have to say phrases to him like it's like so so heroes do you have anything to say for yourselves gee you're really being hard on us it's like oh am I being hard on you you know it's like it would have to be that would be cool I mean that would be cool <laughs> but it, would it, be it, neat. it's more like when when I was I remember watching movies in like the late 90s when they put CGI on the screen before it really got annoying it was always interesting because I was always think gee that CGI looks really great, but I just betrayed the fact that I know it's fake. Like that fake stuff is looking less and less fake, <laughs> but it's like, it's obvious that it's just wrong. Um, but you're appreciating the fact that it's improving. So at a certain point, yeah. When is, when is the AI going to um, just feel like, yeah, that the game is broken. But I, I suppose with a physical board game at some point, they can't really force us to do it. Like if, if you can just figure out what what are the decisions that Zargon makes. Let's say in the future, like 20 years from now, they have a, a hero quest game where Zargon is completely digital. I could just take a piece of paper out and write down all the things that Zargon does. And then I just do that myself, like with people around the board. And these, you know, pieces with chips in them and little sensors are just not, I mean, it, the, the movements are nonsense, but I'm just telling people what it is. Like, I'm simulating it. So at that point, I'm simulating the, what the computer does. Like, would that be possible? Unless the game is completely digital, in which case they can just turn it off because the servers are down or you didn't pay your subscription fee or it's not popular anymore. Whatever. Yeah, we're still getting set up. Thanks. I just want Avalon Hill to know people appreciate that app. It's not like, to me, it's not, I, I don't personally use it much. I've, I've played with it and dabbled, but yeah. I like they're developing it. I like they're still adding stuff to it. And that does give me value to the game. It does add interest to me. You know, I do want to experiment with it more as they develop it a little bit. I hope they're just not slowly putting the campaigns in, like a little more tactics, a little more finesse to it. Like you said, the thing where they shoot, if they could talk, <laughs> and say something periodically would be neat. And you yeah. Multiple choice to response or something would even be cool. Yeah. Well, you know? it's, it's And it's a losing battle. And I don't mean to turn this into a rant cast. I know we got a game to play. But I just want to say this. So what if at some point 
And again, that you'd have to forget all about the community online. They decide, well, the only yeah, the only quests you're going to get are going to be inside the app. Well, guess what some enterprising person is going to do? They're going to play through it by themselves and just write down and map out everything. And then they're just going to print it out. <laughs> so now, oh, for sure. yeah, it's like, and, and, and yes, they could be say, say, well, you know, you're not allowed to reproduce this online, you know, put on a takedown notice to these people, but people are still going to do it and they can't stop it, you know, in your own home. Or you just say, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to write my own quests. So if they try to be heavy handed with it, I think they're going to get a backlash. Yeah. So I don't know. Any of you other guys have anything you want to say or you want to just get, get playing? <laughs> Cause it's a uh, half hour into our time. Yeah. I know. I we... really appreciate what they did with the app. Uh, it's really cool. You know, just of course that I've gone through, just, you know, just go through playing it on my own. It's kind of cool. They took the app away, you know. I don't think it would hurt nah. my play style. Nah. I mean, we, we got along fine without, without it for 30 years. And I... Right. Yeah, it wouldn't take much to program several tactical approaches that the enemies would take, depending on where you're... It wouldn't be that hard, and I hope they do develop some of that. Like, hey, we're going to hunker down in this room and have you come to us because we know you need something in this room. We're going to chase you down or, you know, there could be a few different approaches other than just straightforward spank and tank kind of <laughs> run up, go straight for the guy next to me, Yeah, you know. Well, for now, it's adequate and it's probably as inoffensive as it could be at this point. I mean, yes, it tracks all your data and which I think is probably they're probably studying it very carefully. But the thing is, like, if they study my data, what they're going to get is, oh, this guy played through four or five times and the rest of the time he's just screwing around like he's not actually playing the game like he's just activating skeleton after skeleton and controlling them all and moving them around to places where they're not supposed to go and he's throwing people into solid rock left and right and he's spamming the same stuff over and over it's like okay that's not telling us anything about what people want <laughs> you know and and I'm sure there's tons of people that you never hear from who never use the app or who never finish a quest who don't click through and give feedback like i was just shown the other day that at one at the end of into the northlands there's a little survey you're supposed to take that tells them like you know did you like this part of the quest did you like this feature i've never done that i didn't even know it was there <laughs> so how are yeah, they me either not, they're not learning from it in that way about. So they're going to get a really false impression, I think, if they focus too much on that app data. But who knows? For all I know, millions of people are using it. And they might start to think, yeah, that's what HeroQuest needs to be. And we'll move forward on that. And all this stuff on the Internet, people are saying that's nice, but we can just ignore that. I mean, hopefully they don't get that impression. <laughs> that's a whole can of worms, isn't it? Oh, Angus, yeah, rogue, not r rouge. <laughs> it's it's so, war paint, not uh, not makeup. <laughs> hey, I'll I'll be right back, guys. Okay. So I I suspect you guys are probably plugged in to the latest news a bit more than I am. It, do we have reason to suspect they're trying to do just a full digital AI version of Hero Quest or? No, we don't. We just know okay. that, well, we just know that, so there's two articles I need to read. We know that the technology is being scrutinized and studied by Hasbro, and it's some type of, like, partnership or, or deal uh, where, like, it's being hinted that that's going to be the future. And I'll probably read the actual article and go, well, I kind of didn't quite understand what they were trying to say, but I just get the impression that Ooh, yeah. Yeah. it's not just Hasbro that's doing this, but other companies too are thinking. But of course, Hasbro's the biggest one. Hey, thanks, Big Fire Lizard. Yeah, that they're moving forward, and we don't know if HeroQuest specifically is going to be it, but we know they've got the companion app already. I would not be surprised at all if that's the direction they go. And you've got one D&D with... Uh, Wizards of the Coast, which, of course, is part of Hasbro as well. And I was being reminded the other day that Wikipedia is actually wrong on this. 
that to say that I guess Wizards of the Coast and Avalon Hill are not the same type of thing. Like one's a wholly owned subsidiary and the other is a, an imprint. And I don't quite understand how all that goes with like publisher companies or divisions or whatever within a bigger company. Ask them at Gen Con. That's actually yeah, a good. Exactly. I'd be interested to see like, their listen, motivations and how it's about this, I'm sure a lot more people are confused about this. So yeah. since I'm, you know, I don't work <laughs> at your company, you know, you're gonna have to tell me what all these buzzwords mean, please. Because I think I think a lot of people do have the impression that um, they think Avalon Hill is like this company that walked in to Hasbro and said, "Hey, we've got this game." that we want to work on and Hasbro said sure it's like that's not quite what's happening but I think that also just questioning like the degree of autonomy they have like can they do whatever they want or do they have to like impress somebody and you know show results and then they get whatever much resources allocated to their program you know to do it because I think with Wizards of the Coast it's like every time they make a decision people hate like they just get just just pelted with you know complaints but the bigger company doesn't like step in and go uh here's what we're gonna do it's always that company just kind of like answering hey jacer jacer's here jacer says app is nice for save feature combined with tupperware container for each hero tupperware container for each hero i'm not sure what he means by that but Anyway, on the next rant cast after Gen Con is over, we'll have to kind of revisit this topic and get into it. So yeah, right now, the idea that HeroQuest is going to go fully digital or digital hybrid, don't know that. Don't know that for a fact at all. I think they want to hear from people, and I think letting them know that the Zargon feature still needs to be open to a human person you know is uh is the way to go and yes i would be impressed to see like a in more interactive version i was thinking too okay if you let's say you get rid of the companion app let's say you put it in the vr so you you take your phone and you strap it to your head in the little cardboard viewfinder and then you're staring at the board and then you're seeing little magical effects and you're hearing a voice saying stuff i mean you could do that but again that's taken away a lot of the charm of a board game and it's a gimmick that some people are going to like and it's a gimmick that's going to just annoy other people who don't want that and yeah if the company decides yeah you know we're just going to retire this game now and then you've lost that feature you know it's like if you're playing nightmare and your vhs you know goes out like okay well now a big chunk of the game is gone but they have to recreate the game from scratch because Hero Quest, I mean, it's already built so that a human can take over and do it. Big Fire Lizard says stuff like Hero Quest Advanced and more with the app will happen later, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd like an advanced rule book they come up with for, like, you know, more intricate rule sets. But the thing is, like, being Zargon, it, yes, some pe for some people it's a chore, for some people it's oh, I wish there was somebody to take over. But for other people, that is the game. Like, I enjoy it, you know? It'd be like saying, okay, well, from now on, Warhammer is not going to allow you to paint your figures. Like, people would riot. <laughs> they would be angry. Because for some people, that's the most fun thing. So for a lot of us, Beans Argon is one of the most fun things, whether you've written the quest or you didn't, you know? Not just like a driverless car where you're just kind of sitting there with your hands hovering over the wheel going, okay, if this thing screws up, I'm going to take over. It's not just like that. It's like, no, I want to be in control. Uh, Big Fire Lizard says, I think they're going to slowly release physical stuff and won't add more until they milked all that. Yeah. But it's, it's a different kind of thing. I mean, playing a, a VR game, which I haven't played many, but it's it's cool, but having actu the actual physical pieces is, is something else. And yes, you've got people that play Tabletop Simulator, and we're playing this now. Like, me picking up this elf, like, you don't get to experience that, right? You're just watching it. You're just imagining it. Unless you have your own set and you're doing the same, you're mimicking my movements at the same time. So, in this sense, this is virtual. But this is just one way of playing. Like, 
when you're playing with your friends or family at home, I mean, you're having a totally different experience than what we're having here. This is just the next best thing that we can do. So I think having both versus like getting rid of this and having a completely like just playing a video game. Do you feel like your streams would go smoother in tabletop simulator? Since everyone no. can move their own pieces, no, nothing okay. goes smoothly. In no, tabletop. it doesn't. <laughs> okay. The, the the way that that you can do that is, and this is what the other the Hero Quest Discord has done. Not Hero Quest fans, but Hero Quest is they've gathered a bunch of people who basically all agreed. Okay, we're all going to buy Tabletop Simulator and install the Hero Quest Master Edition. We're all going to learn how to do it, and we're going to agree to meet up and play, which is fine. But that's what you got to do to make it happen, because otherwise you've got this clunky interface that's not very intuitive that you've got to learn and master. So it takes maybe an hour or two, and you've got to make sure it's working on your computer and it doesn't work in mobile. So people like Jacer who come in with the phone, forget it. Sorry, you know. So you got all that. Plus you're at the mercy of whoever makes the mods. Like if their mods are broken that day, well, I guess you don't get to use them, or maybe you don't like the way they put things together. Tabletop Simulator ha has its pros, but it it does not. It's not uh, the end-all, be-all solution that some people imagine it to be. It really isn't, and we've tried. We really have. So that's why we're not using it. <laughs> Big Fire Lizard said, "If I had friends, I'd 100% play a Zargon, but then I feel like I wouldn't have any friends after a few games." <laughs> well, it's possible to be Zargon where you're not so heavy-handed that yeah, people don't want to play anymore. I think if more game spaces uh, had people bringing HeroQuest in, that could change. Because you don't have to have friends to play, you know, you can just play with random people who appreciate a game, you know. But yeah, is what kind of user base does Avalon Hill want to have? Do they want to have a ton of people who are loners in the world of games who just want to play against a computer? Or... Is it, you know, for people who want to get together and play games? I mean, yeah, it's effort to get people together to play a game. It really is. <laughs> I have no clue how to hold back. Well, they could write a little guide for you. You should hang out in HeroQuest Fans Discord, and we'll, uh, we'll teach you in the GM channel. So, all right, guys, I'm going to stop the stream, not because we're stopping, but because I want to kind of restart as we're actually playing. So just give me a moment. Yeah, we'll teach you how to be a GM. Don't worry. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs>